Hey everyone, my name is Vedenin, and in this video we're going to have a look at Hugging GPT, a paper by Microsoft Research that describes an idea that you can use a large language model such as ChatGPT or GPT-4 in order to control some specific AI models, for example, image classification, object detection, etc. from the Hugging Face repository and then carried out much more complex task compared to what just a large language model can do. There is also an open source system called Jarvis by Microsoft, which is available on GitHub, which is essentially an implementation of the what the paper is describing. And we're going to have a brief overview over that as well. So the authors claim that this is a step towards advanced artificial intelligence. Is this true? Let's find out. The paper is available on archive and I'm going to link it into the description down below. Let's have a look. So the Hugging GPT paper or the title of it is Hugging GPT solving a task with ChatGPT and its friends in Hugging Face. So the authors are already hinting in what this should be. So they're talking about solving AI tasks with one model, which is in this case ChatGPT and then other models. So the first sentence within the abstract is also quite revealing. Solving complicated AI tasks with different domains and modalities is a key step toward advanced artificial intelligence. So what they're hinting at or describing is that the most important part of AI is to solve some specific tasks within different domains. And they're talking also about LLMs and ChatGPT, etc. But they're also providing a description right here on what this model might look like or what the main idea behind it is. So we have a prompt by a human probably. Can you describe what this picture depicts and count how many objects in the picture? Then this is given to uh, an LLM or one large language model such as ChatGPT, for example. And then this controller is doing a couple of things. Plan a task, select a model, execute the model right here, and then generate response. So the large language model as you, is used as the brains of the operation or the brains of the answer. And the heavy lifting or the parts that are exclusive to this task are done by some models within the hugging face. So in this case, we have to describe this picture and how, how and count how many objects do we have within it. So probably this is done with a ResNet from Facebook in order to detect the objects. And then after the object detection is done, uh, we can count the objects and then we can do GPT-2 image captioning and then give the image to this model and then use it in order to get the text of the model. And in this case, a text that can describe the given image, a herd of giraffes and zebras grazing in a field. Okay, so this looks pretty interesting. And in order to complete this task, essentially ChatGPT was given some models and then it took the model predictions and synthesized this response. Let's have a deeper look into how this works. Very interesting. So Hugging GPT, the workflow of Hugging GPT consists of four stages, task planning, model selection, task ex execution and response generation. So these are the steps that we look through. And here we have a much more general or better image of what is happening under the hood. So again, we have a prompt with a specific image. And this time we have, please generate an image where a girl is reading a book and her pose is the same as the boy in the image. And some image is given, then please describe the new image with your voice. Okay, so given this, Actually, what the chat GPT in this case is doing is to do some task planning. And you can see that actually task planning 
looks like a lot of like function or something like a tool from the Langchain uh, library, which we've looked at briefly in the previous video. So here we have a couple of tasks, post control, image classification, image to text, post to image, object detection, and then text to speech. So all of these tasks are, are going to be used by ChatGPT, but the specific tasks are going to be carried out by some particular models. So in this case, for post control, object detection, and image classification, etc. For object detection, we are using, again, Facebook Detter, ResNet 101. So in this case, ChatGPT is using this model. Then this is given to execute the task with the ResNet model. And then we are creating bounding boxes with probabilities, etc. for the object detection part of this task. And then we have all of the tasks with the particular images and then the responses. And then all of this is again given to ChatGPT or other model. And it says that the image you gave me of is a boy. The first thing that I did was to use OpenCV open, open Post Control model to analyze the pose of the boy in the image. So here you can see that this is the response from the pose of the boy. I fed that image specifically located, etc., into the model to get an output image of the pose. So this is the the pose image. Then I take that pose and generate a new image located at image three using control net open pose. Okay, so it is using the pose as an input and then using another model to generate something, a girl that is reading as the input to this next model. Next, I ran object detection on the image generated in the previous step to get predictions of the objects present in the image, including the box location. Okay, so it's running object detection on the newly generated image. These predictions were run through the Detter ResNet 101 model. So it is doing object detection on this with the ResNet or Detter model. The box was drawn on the image. Okay, so it is given the bounding boxes of the located objects. Then use the predictions of an image classification model and an image captioning model to generate the caption of newly generated image. It generated a text, a girl sitting on a bed reading a book. And finally, it did with fast speech from Facebook convert the generated text, which was this caption, into text audio. And it says where the audio should be read through. So this is pretty mind blowing, actually. Yeah. So ChatGPT is or other LLMs can essentially provide the brains behind all of this execution, which is mind blowing. And then here is a list of the possible tasks that are provided using the particular models from Hugging Face. Text classification, token classification, summarization, etc. And note that those are carried out by specific models from the Hugging Face models selection. Uh, we have image related ones, text relation related ones, audio, and then video tasks. Very, very, very cool. Okay. Uh, the authors are also providing other examples right here. Those are very interesting. You might go and look through those. Uh, here is another one that I really liked. Given a collection of images, so you're giving a lot of a couple of images, three images. Please tell me how many zebras are in these pictures. To determine this, so it says that there are four zebras. Okay, this model called etc. Cap image captioning. Okay, from the caption, I was able to determine that image A contained a cat and image B contained two zebras. Okay. The model generated images with predicted boxes for each zebra. Okay. The model generated images, etc., which each zebra and the images can be found in the following locations. So it do it does the object detection on those. And finally, it analyzed the 
captions from the, the model output. And then it took a confirmation that there are indeed four zebras. Wow. Okay. Another a lot of cool examples right here. So look at this image. What is the red topping? Sure, the red topping on the pizza in the image is tomato. And it's telling you which model has been used. And it is giving actually the prompt to the model. What is the red topping? The answer with high score is tomato. With, and it's giving you the confidence of the model. That's amazing. All right. So the authors are describing a couple of limitations of this approach. And here there are. Hugging GPT inevitably suffers from some limitations. One of the limitations were most concerned about efficiency. So the inference time of this large language model can be quite large. So for each round of user requests, Hugging GPT requires at least one interaction with the large language model during the task planning, model selection and response generation stages. Yeah, but you can think about probably that in somewhere in the near future, I guess, those models are going to be sped up quite a lot compared to today's efficiency. So this might not be an issue in the future. Of course, we need to work on that. The second is the limitation of maximum context length. Okay, so if you recall that large language models are actually bounded by the number of tokens that they can input and output. So this is a limitation that uh, Hugging GPT is also having. But yeah, GPT-4 has 32k tokens that can use in a single input and output, which is quite large actually. So probably in the future, this might not be such a big problem after all, but at least for now it is. We have used the conversion conversation window and only track the conversation context in the task pointing stage to alleviate it. So there are basically trimming the conversation. Yeah, but if you go through complete conversations, it might be quite a large context that you need to carry around. And then the third is system stability, which includes two aspects. One is the rebellion that occurs during the inference of large language models. Yeah, sometimes the responses of those types of models, ChatGPT or GPT-4, are quite unexpected. The second is uncontrollable state of the expert model hosted on Hugging Face inference. So first, the output format might not be what you expect. So you might ask for something and then the model might provide something slightly different. And if you, you are trying to parse through the result uh, and you're giving it a specific parser, you might your parser might fail. And the next one is the models on Hugging Face might be affected by network latency or service state. So the authors of the paper Hugging GPT, as I've already told you, are actually Microsoft researchers. So in Microsoft Jarvis, you can see that they're trying to implement actually the Jarvis system, which is essentially what Hugging GPT is already providing as a concept. And then here you have the implementation. So Language serves as an interface for LLMs to connect numerous AI models for solving complicated AI tasks. So exactly the same that what we look through the paper and they have the image from the paper right here. And they're saying that they introduce a collaborative system that consists of an LLM or large language model as the controller and numerous expert models. And these are the four steps that we look through when the model is generating the response based on the prompt query. So here they're also giving us an uh, open AI uh, quick start of everything that you need to do in order to run this model. And yeah, it is looking that it is working. Let me know if you want to have a deeper look into this and probably try out some uh, examples. In this video, we had a look through the paper Hugging GPT. The main idea behind the paper is that you can use a large language model 
to orchestrate simpler models that are more specific to some particular tasks. In our case, we had a look through how you can maybe use ChatGPT or GPT-4 in order to do object detection and then counting of objects, image captioning, etc. in order to provide responses to much complex queries or prompts by the user. The paper is a really interesting idea and the authors from Microsoft are already have already published some code on the Jarvis system, which is available in GitHub. And you might have to go and look around. Let me know if you want to run through this system and maybe do some demo with it. Let's see the capabilities of that uh, open source project. Thanks for watching, guys. Please like, share and subscribe. Bye.